have the last fun on this stage, I would say the biggest fun and the roast of the day is we will have a reverse pitching. AKA, there's gonna be five wonderful, very powerful investors who will come on the stage. They will have three minutes to give a pitch, just like usually startups do. And then we have three awesome startupists uh, on the front row in here. Can you guys maybe raise your hands for those who are attending? You can check out who are the startupists. Uh, who will be judging? There is two minutes for Q&A for you guys, so you have time to, to roast and, uh, and try to get as much uncomfortable answers from the investors as possible. And um, before we start, I would maybe like to, for you guys to give a quick introduction, who you are, where you're from, so who wants to go first? I can go first. Um, hello everyone, my name is Anton, I'm CEO and founder at CopyMonkey. We are a Latvian startup with the AI for e-commerce content generation. Awesome. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Kristaps and I'm the founder of uh, a Latvian medtech startup called Vigo Health. We are the leading digital therapeutic company for stroke management in the world. In the world. Yeah. Uh, so, and I'm super happy. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Thanks. I hope so too. So, and the last but not the least. Hello, my name is Max. I'm uh, founder of Corebook, and this is a uh, uh, business-to-business SaaS platform for marketing teams to manage brand effectively and collaborate with the other teams. I like how the startups are already ready for like those short pitches. Sure. So now we can see if the investors are ready to give their pitches. And as the first one, I'm going to ask to the stage, Anna from Kaya. Come here, the stage is yours. Here's your wonderful clicker. This way, right? Yes, there's the next and the before. Uh, let's go. Thank you. All right. What you Show me what you got. Ah, uh, whoops. Show me what you got. Can you hear it? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> All right. Pitching is scary. And I can feel it right Shut now. Out. Chill out, dude. Okay, and you, founders. You don't have to Shame you. out, you. Shame you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and you, founders, you basically experience this level of stress and pressure every day when you're fundraising, sometimes even multiple times a day. I mean, this level that <laughs> I just experienced, it's scary. And, you know, it's your startup. This is something that, like, basically your love, your dreams, your hopes, your past, your present and your future is at stake. So, when to this thing you add actual something that you didn't expect it, like a bully that you're facing, we all are hearing and reading from Sifted those stories, those horror stories about startups being ghosted, uh, video calls without video, and like I could go on. Uh, I cannot promise you that you will never face a VC bully again. But what I can promise you is you will not face a bully in me or any of my colleagues at Kaya. We say we are invested in you, and that means that we are not just giving you money. We are invested and engaged from the very beginning. We listen. So that's my team, and wow, that's <laughs> one more minute, awesome. Uh, please do feel free to reach out, drop me or any of my colleagues a line if you're a tech startup or tech-enabled startup at early stage. We invest with at Seed Studio, Seed Plus, Series A, and we love to follow on. So yeah, thank you. It was quite an experience. Um, you can also approach me after this super stressful experience. Thank you, everyone, and I'm looking for questions. Whoa! Congrats to the first VC speaker. I'm gonna give you headphones so that you can actually 
Let's let's try to get in an awkward <laughs> exchange. I'll take exchange, the exchange. Yes. I can take the hat. We can put the hat back on. Uh, it's no. Gonna look, no, 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 it's gonna look too super weird. Yeah. So uh, now we're gonna give some time for the startups to ask. We already have the first question. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Thank. Thank you for the pitch. It was excellent. <laughs> the best pitch I ever heard. She's my investor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but I have a question. Um, what do you consider as a very good result in return of investment? So, what is the multiply of the fund uh, which you consider as a good? Mm. Uh, okay, this is a very good question. <laughs> um, when we are investing, obviously, uh, VC fund uh, also has investors, so we do need to think about multiplies. But uh, based on like every startup that we are uh, talking to and investing, uh, it's a very early stage situation. So actually, to be honest, what we look at is a lot of vision, passion for the product, and founders, we can totally feel that we want to back. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for the presentation. It was very entertaining to watch. <laughs> um, my okay. question is about traction. Okay. What is your traction? I didn't hear that in your presentation. Could you please share? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm enjoying it, actually. I think in the guys are way. enjoying it, too. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, traction is super important. I'm really happy that you asked. And. Uh, can I have next question, please? Sure. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for this answer. <laughs> so my question is, uh, what is your go-to-market strategy? How do you acquire best startups? Uh, actually, yeah, this one I love. Okay, yeah, uh, go-to-market strategy is we believe in community-driven uh, deal flow. We want to be out there. We want to, you know, you guys make fun of us. And, uh, you know, it's about being approachable. And uh, obviously, we're professionals, <laughs> even if it doesn't <laughs> look like now. Uh, but we're also humans. And we really focus on that because uh, investing at early stage, uh, it takes years to work and collaborate together. So it's really important to have this right fit and to see humans in each other. Okay, well, thank, thank you. you, Anna. It was a very good first performance. You survived the wildfire and, and uh, the whole stress of being the first from the VCs who is pitching today. And as the second participant, I'm gonna ask our wonderful Arun from Rockstar to come. Here's your wonderful clicker. Yes, thank you Use very much. Use it with the best uh, possible intentions. All and right. let's Excellent. go. Excellent, thanks a lot. Good to see all of you here today as one of the last acts. Uh, I will try to make it entertaining. Uh, Rockstart and Accelerator, Global Accelerator VC, investing very early stage. Uh, myself, my name is Rune Field, and I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO. And I was motivated to start this company when first time I started the company was doing my studies. And my university professors were the one who actually advised me on how to do things. I learned a lot from that, but not how to build a company. And I realized the need for having a true ecosystem for entrepreneurs. So I want to start talking a bit about Rockstar as a whole. We have a purpose, and that is to fund the transformation to a regenerative and sustainable future. And we are on a mission to empower founders to drive global change at a global scale. Now, we do that by focusing on three important areas agri-food, energy, and emerging technologies. As you might have heard many times by now, we're getting towards 10 billion people, and we very fast have to change our food supply system. We also need to ensure we don't go over the 1.5 degrees Celsius, and we need to continue to invest in new and better technologies who will drive change in the future. So how we do this is we build funds in these different areas, and we fund startups out of every early states, and onto Series B. 
Now, we are a team of around 50 people operating globally. We have offices in Copenhagen, Amsterdam, and Bogota. And we invested in more than 260 companies across four continents in 56 different countries. And our track record is that the alumni value is just about 800 actually million euros today. The companies raised more than 180, so these stats are not entirely correct. Follow-on rate is 66, and we have assets on the management of just above 60 million euros. We've seen six exits, and I'm gonna have a slide with that as well. This is not the updated presentation, I'm sorry about that. That should have come right now. But we go in really early, so basically we like to be the first investor in the companies, and then together with market partners, we co-invest onto Series B and we can do up to 50% of the subsequent round. That was the slide with the portfolio, some of the portfolio companies that exited. A company like 3 Hubs, we went in when the guys only had a plan, they still had a job, and they said, if you invest in us, we'll, we'll quit our jobs and we build this company. Now, nine years later, they were acquired by Protolabs, a US company, for 330 million US dollars. So we made our money back 108 times, and along the way, helped them to raise the financing and grow as a company. What we want to do is to build the absolute number one ecosystem for entrepreneurs within agri-food, energy, and emerging technologies, focusing on access to capital, market, expertise, and community. And that's it. And we're just a tad bit over the ah, time. Just a tad a bit. So here you go, <laughs> so the headphones, so that you can Thank actually you. listen to the questions. And the startups, it's your go. Thanks, Rune, for the very interesting presentation, and thanks for also sharing your traction. <laughs> um, my question is about your business model. I didn't really understand how you make money. Could you please tell oh, me? Oh, the business model, yeah, that's a big one. Yep. Uh, we take an uh, equity percentage of the company, so we offer a safe agreement uh, as a start when we invest, and then we convert into equity in the subsequent round, and hopefully the companies will be very successful and we make money on the investment. What's the percentage that you usually ask the companies? So we have two agreements, one that have a cap of 2 million euros and one that have no cap and a sliding discount. Uh, that goes from and the 20 percentage? to 50. So that depends on the valuation of the company in the, in the following round. If it's the, if it's the cap version, it will be just below 6%. Okay. Yeah. okay, sounds good. Thank you, and I wish that next time we'll see the updated presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you. hope so too. I was updating it out before. I don't know. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, we yeah. can manage one more question. Yeah, yeah, I have a question. It looks like your market, your choice of um, vertical is very specialized. So it might be that you have like limited, uh, limited uh, choice of startups. Hmm. How do you deal with non-competitiveness in your portfolio? Or is it the issue? Because of the, the, s the smaller sample uh, size and the smaller deal flow we, we look at? Yeah, yeah. you mentioned energy, mm -hmm. agro, and... Uh, yeah, emerging tech. Yes, this is yeah. a lot broader, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a global mandate, so we invest in companies all over. So for the Agri-Food Fund, we made around 30 investments. Quite a few in India, some in Africa, some in Latin America. Um, and if you look at it globally, it's actually a pretty big market. But if you look at it only European-wise, or let's say for one country in Europe, then it's is not broad enough. And uh, what is the, the biggest size of market? How many startups are there which you would target? When we're reviewing uh, companies every year, yeah. we look at 2,500. Oh, nice. Uh, thank to you. invest in 10. Okay. Yeah? Well, thank you for the questions, guys. Uh, thank, thank, thank you for the pitching, uh, Rune. I think the Rockstar presented themselves quite well. And the next ones, I'm welcoming Aaron from 500. Use the clicker wisely, All right, and you. you have your time there. Uh, okay. Not have yet, fun. but yeah, now I do. <laughs> All right, can I start? Yes. Good. All right. So I'm Martin. Uh, I'm a GP at 500, and we invest in outliers. So what does that mean? We are uh, investing in emerging uh, European early stage companies uh, and trying to take them global. So by early stage, I mean anything from idea stage to MVP for us. So we're typically at three seed and seed. Uh, and we are typically as a result of first money in and we're trying to help support these teams and also invest down the line and take them global, which I'll get more into. So we started off in 2016 uh, with our fund one, 
We made 40 investments from that fund. We have three unicorns in the portfolio, a couple other companies that we like calling Sunicorns, so we'll hopefully uh, get that number up a little bit, have more couple of uh, more unicorns in the portfolio. 85% of the portfolio have uh, raised follow-on funding uh, after our investment of over a billion dollars from some of the names that you can see over there. So we do help a lot with making introductions to prominent uh, funds, both in the uh, US and in Europe. We're now investing out of fund two. It's a 50 million euro vehicle. Uh, we typically invest uh, between 250K up to 2 million euros of initial tickets, followed it up with up to 5 million euros of follow-ons. We are quite sector agnostic. We really don't care. We're really focusing on the best founding teams that precede uh, more than anything else. Uh, you can see some of the logos that we've invested in. So we've invested in 10 companies over the last year. Um, and we hope to make around like 25 to 30 investments within the next couple of years. So we are part of the 500 network. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, 500 is a US-based investor with over 25 funds and 45 unicorns globally. Um, 500 is a big believer that unicorns can come from anywhere. Uh, which is obviously something we also believe in and are trying to replicate across Eastern Europe and Baltics and what we've been seeing over the last couple of years happening across Europe as well. So how can we try and replicate this across Eastern Europe and Baltics and how we help? We make a lot of connections pretty much. Uh, so as I said, you know, 85% of the portfolio companies have raised follow-on funding. Uh, we made a lot of the introductions to the Series A and Series B funds. That's predominantly what we do in the US and Europe. We also have a founder hub with over 2,600 portfolio companies where you can talk to a lot of them, share ideas if you're in the same space, uh, make them your first customers. We also help with a lot, of those, a lot of those introductions as well. We have an extensive network of mentors as well, and it always helps that we have discounts for a lot of the services and you know, providers. This is the team. It's a diverse team of nine people. Um, Khan is with me. He's somewhere around here, so find him if you want to talk. Uh, hopefully, you will be seeing much more of us uh, in the near future within the Baltics. That's the idea. We invest in the worst potential, so if you're looking for pre-seed seed funding, let me know. Oh, my God. Second and second. Good job. Thank so you. So, let's switch. I'm getting the clicker. You're getting the headphones. This so is such a weird experience. <laughs> I think, like, everyone should shout at the same time, like, you know, to scare everyone in the back. With uh, the headphones, but anyway. <laughs> Maybe we can do that at the end, <laughs> but not now, okay? okay. Uh, now it's time for questions, startups. Thank you. Thank you very much for your pitch. Uh, during your pitch, I googled a few more VCs uh, like yours, such as Techstars and YC. What is your secret sauce? How do you differentiate from them? So I think like a couple of things that I can say. Number one, different to Techstars and YC, uh, we are actually a fund and not an accelerator. So it, the model doesn't work where you know, we, we are trying to go, go through the accelerator phase and sort of invest in startups through the accelerator and help them out kind of a way. We're actually investing much more sizable tickets and helping much more hands-on. Uh, but the network is something that we do put first and foremost uh, in a similar way. Um, so we're hoping with all of the other funds and all of the uh, other funds down the uh, sort of the downstream capital as well, we can help a lot. So 500 does a lot of growth funds as well. So we do have a lot of available capital, even if it's not our own fund, uh, with sort of growth funds, pre-IPO funds that we can continue investing down the line. So I think that always helps. Okay, one more question. Thank you, Arin, for the presentation. It Thank was you. great to watch. Um, my question is regarding the geopolitical situation. Has the, has the war in Ukraine impacted the way you work in any way or impacted the deal flow that you are working with? So Ukraine is one of the uh, countries that we do invest in. So from that perspective, it definitely has. Uh, we do have a couple of portfolio companies in Fund 1 who have had to relocate. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, especially in terms of how we look across Ukraine and the deal flow, it's definitely changed. We're hoping it to go back to normal quite soon, so yeah. That's what I can say, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Good luck in the future. Thank you. Wonderful timing, wonderful pitch. Thank you very, Thank much, you very Aaron. much, Aaron. Uh, and uh, we can move forward. So we've heard already three uh, VCs presenting. There are two more to go, so keep in touch. I see people are still watching here. I hope people are also watching online. So next one on stage, I'm gonna welcome Clara from PropTech1. So, Clara, 
the wonderful clicker, all yours. Thank you. And the stage is also yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Clara. I'm investment manager at PropTech One. And we are obviously a PropTech and construction tech fund. We're investing early stage, so between 500k and 2 million as an initial investment. And uh, we're investing across Europe. And uh, as you see, we have done 14 investments so far. Um, and I would like to tell you a bit more about why we're actually doing what we're doing. So real estate is the largest asset class in the world. And I think we've realized that all in our own experience, since we're all engaging with real estate on an everyday basis, it's very little digitalized. There is a lot of fuck ups around buildings. Usually things don't work. And there's a huge opportunity for prop tech and construction tech startups to bring that forward. And that's exactly the opportunity we are seeing. But, and these are a couple of trends that we are following and that we are seeing. It's the trend towards more digitalization. It's the trend of more customerization. And as well, the whole sustainability trend that is getting more and more important for the real estate industry since, and I guess everyone has heard that, but the real estate industry is one of the biggest emitter of CO2 gases. And um, what we usually, what we ask ourselves is always, what, what can we bring from added value to the table? And why do we actually focus on construction tech and prop tech? The reason for that is that the real estate industry is really complex. There is, it is usually difficult to understand and a lot of generalist investors are struggling to understand the value proposition of a prop tech. And um, we do see ourselves as an expert um, in the tech side and we do have our experts on the real estate side which are our investors as well as our advisors and our venture partners. So these are, vent the venture partners are usually a lot of people that are ex-executives from the traditional industry that know the traditional industry for a very long time and then they know where we have to change things. And um, our investors are family offices with real estate assets or larger corporates in the real estate industry. So people that have and can add value to the table and have a lot of knowledge in the space. And uh, we are doing that across Europe by building up a local network in each country with real estate players as well as the startup ecosystem to maximize the added value we can bring to the table. And yeah, to sum that up, early stage, Europe, PropTech and Contact. Um, and we're happy to invest between 500K and 2 million. Okay, good job. Good job with the timing. Thank really you. good job with the timing. I'd say startups would also appreciate. We didn't get, we didn't even have in last second. It went even more better than that. So now we can hear the questions. Startups, Thank your two you. minutes are up. Thank you very much for your pitch. Um, I haven't seen any traction on your slides. Can you walk me through it? Can I get the slides again? <laughs> Tech guys, can we get slides again? I'm not seeing a yes or a no. Can we see thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, it doesn't matter. We've done 14 investments so far. It's our first fund. Uh, here's it's the a slide deck. Um, 50 million fund. Um, and out of this fund, we've done these wonderful 14 investments. Um, and there's still more to come. And why now? Because the real estate industry has been lacking with digitalization. And there's a lot of trends that are putting some pressure on digitalizing the real estate industry. And it moves from prop tech and construction tech being a nice to have to a must have. Okay, one more question. Yeah, uh, real estate market seems to be very conservative uh, compared to any other, you know, emerging markets and like this. So yeah, w the question is, um, what is the annual growth of the market and uh, what is the potential for the growth in this conservative market? So the prop tech industry raised 9 billion last year, which was um, a rise of 30% over the past year, uh, which is a significant potential. And if you look at all the trends we're facing also around sustainability, um, it's trends that will grow and grow bigger. And you have seen on the slides as well, 
real estate is a large asset class. We all know that the value of real estate asset has been growing and growing. So real estate companies have a lot of money to spend on new technologies and improving their buildings. And that's exactly the market potential we are tapping into. I'll be super quick, okay? <laughs> um, I'm gonna use something that investors have told me before. Um, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I don't understand anything about prop tech, but good luck. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks that's, a lot. That, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. I'll allow that one. Thank you, Clara. Thank it you. It was nice having you on stage. Now let's get the clicker. And uh, we're four down, one more to go. And last but not the least, I'm going to welcome on the stage Radu from Notion Capital. The clicker is yours. Thank you. And the stage is yours as well. Wish you luck. Hey, everyone. Um, first of all, great to meet you. And uh, I hope the panel is going to be soft on me today. Uh, but no, realistically, it's great to meet you. Um, I'm part of the investment team at Notion Capital. Um, and I don't know how much you know about the fund. We're the, one of the most active European SaaS VCs. We only do B2B and SaaS. And it's of the core of everything we do. Um, we tend to invest across Series A. Our tickets usually vary between two to 10 million on average. Our sweet spot is five million. Um, and we were lucky to have been chosen by some very good founders. Uh, it still surprises me to this day and excites me the fact that we've, they've decided to partner with us. Um, we're early investors into trade shift, to go carless, workable, Dixa here in the Nordics, currency cloud, which recently acquired, was acquired by Visa for one billion um, and a couple of others. Uh, one of the Baltic companies we've invested in is actually Interactio. Um, I don't know whether they are here, but if in the Interactio guys are here, I would appreciate some love, so the panel is nicer to me. Um, and all in all, we've invested in um, 100 companies by now, so going quite big. In terms of our history, we were founded in 2009, um, and I hope this slide really shows you how we actually morphed as a fund. So prior to 2009, the founders of Notion had three companies. Each um, actually turned out very well. Message Labs, the last one, was acquired by Symantec for 700 million in 2008. The company was doing 150 million in RRR at the time. And um, Notion is actually one of the first breed of European investors that come from operators. And um, in, our, in our history, we were founded in 2009. And quite early on, we realized that there is obviously a lot of money in the market, and it's actually difficult to make founders like us. Um, so what we came up with with this idea of the Notion platform, which obviously it's quite commoditized and everybody knows about them. But what we try to do is that we try to build our um, our support post investment across three main dimensions, right? So we invested Series A, and what we see is that our founders are going through an inflection point, right? They usually have seen product market fit, and they're now in the process of just scaling the company and becoming a world class leader. And we try to support them across three core dimensions. One of them is pricing, which it's quite easy. Try to work with them on um, how to monetize open source, for example. That's something big on us. For us, um, on hiring, we have an in-house recruiter who works with our portfolio companies on defining your post-investment growth strategy and how we can help you with that. And then on go to market, which is probably the most exciting bit. Uh, the panel, if you want to ask me a couple of questions about that. I think it's actually cool. So basically, we have two operating partners who take secondments with our portfolio companies um, and just help them transition from seed or early Series A all the way up to Series B. Um, but now my time is up, so. Thank you. Awesome. I turned my mic on. Here Thank you go, you. the headphones and the startups. Your t two minutes are up. Thank you. What was your name? Oh, <laughs> my name is Radu. Radu, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very entertaining to watch. <laughs> Have you heard this before? Um, my question is, how, how is Notion different from other investors? Why should I pick you? Um, I think this is a very good question, right? And um, what, we, what we always um, advise our future or potential portfolio companies is to always pick founder investors who are best for them. Um, and it depends what kind of syndicate you're looking to create, right? Are you looking to um, get someone like Insight, which is probably one of our more biggest indirect competitors at Series A and Series B? Or are you looking for someone with a deep 
SaaS and B2B experience with an operator background. Um, I think Notion really sets that apart. Our platform team is probably quite different from the rest of the platform teams here in Europe at least, just because um, we put a lot of work on it. So for example, one of our operating partners, he was the general manager and VP for me at Workday, then went on to be a VP of sales at Hortonworks, and the guy went through five IPOs, I think, by now. Um, and Andy puts a lot of support on, um, provides a lot of support for our portfolio company. So he's taking second months with them, building the go-to-market. And I think that's something that we think it's an asset, but it's up to you, obviously, to decide whether you find it useful or not. Yeah, I'll think about it. Thank okay, you. Okay, 30 more seconds. Any more quick questions? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your pitch. So um, nobody loves slow investors. So my question is, how fast are you? So I can tell you that this, the fastest ticket we've turned around was three days. Impressive, thank you. No. One more? I should. Okay, yeah. let's go for one more. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank and you. uh, my question is, uh, what would be the most important uh, quality uh, you will look at in founders? In founders or in portfolio, in, in startups? In startups, so, okay, in startups, let's, let's say. So in, in startups, I think the most important thing is velocity. And um, we seeing that you know how to take the company from half a million in sales and recurring revenue all the way up to being a category leader. And I think the ambition, that's part of the founder, and it's something you feel when you talk to people. And also, um, you, at the company itself, having a high level plan on how to go there. Right? E.g., if you are an open source platform or tool, you knowing that you have a high level strategy on how to monetize that traction on open source. Um, and I think that's it on. Yeah. Thank you very much.